Hey kids, welcome to uh, Unit 2, Lesson 10, Scope and This, Exercise Number 1. We have some important vocabulary to learn, so let's jump into it. We have four terms, override, scope, return type, overloading. Overriding really is what we did in our last lesson with the two-string method. Remember, we inherited the two-string method from the object, and we had to override it to get the display that we wanted. In that case, it was displaying a value instead of a memory location. And really, we've dealt with scope already. Think of using the get and set methods and how instance variables cannot be accessed outside of a class. Look at this graphic here. This kind of shows the same thing. We have a class scope with private instance variables. We have a method scope and even a block scope sometimes. And understanding those scopes and how they interact is very important. And I really think we're gonna learn a little something about that in the next exercise. Next is the return types. And I know you're probably thinking, well, let's just return or void Mr. Rhodes. But look at this graphic. When we're talking return type, we're actually talking the type of data, whether it be an int, double, boolean, or a string. And then there's finally overloading. And this one's a little tricky. It's a lot like overriding, just with a little nuance with it. If we look at this graphic here, when we override the bark method here, we are literally changing it to print bull. In the overloading, we're using the same method, but it's taking different parameters. And we've seen this already. Remember, we've made our no argument and then our parameterized constructors. That's overloading using the same method name with different parameters. With that being said, let's see if we can't match some of these definitions to their term. A type of value to be given from the method. Well, that sounds like a return type to me. Defining two or more constructors or methods with the same name but different signatures. Well, that sounds like overloading. To define a method in a subclass with the same method signature as the method inherited from a superclass. That sounds like the two string example I just talked about. Where a variable can be used, that sounds an awful lot like scope. That deals where variables can be accessed. Well, let's see if I'm right, kids. Yay! Hopefully this video helped you understand some vocabulary terms that we're going to use in the next exercise. As always, if you have any questions, kids, come see me. Otherwise, I'll see you on the next video. See you later, kids. Bye, bye, bye.